Hi, Shelly Mosley. Happy Wednesday. Today is January the 17th of 2024. Boy, has it been a week. I know uh, many of you have dealt with the, the ice storms and the snow and the, all the stuff. Um, even in Texas, we had some pretty uh, bad weather and praise God, we didn't lose our electricity once. And, you know, he is so good to, to keep us. We were able to use our heater. Um, my daughter's heater in her house went out. So, and that was something that we had to deal with, but praise God, nothing else, uh, nothing else happened. We, uh, the roads were pretty bad. We didn't have school for a couple of days, but, um, but you know, for the protection of, um, you know, the buses and the, and the people that needed to get out. I mean, our temperatures were frigid our, in, in Texas. That's pretty uh, low temperatures for what we went through. You know, the low one day was nine and, uh, you know, that the wind chill was below zero. And so um, it was, I feel, I always feel for people that have to work outside um, and, you know, truck drivers and different people that have to be on the roads. My heart always goes out to them because of times like that, it's difficult. But praise God, we've weathered the storm. Um, he is so good and he is so faithful and he always, always causes us to triumph. And thank you for your grace when it comes to um, the fact that I can't get on every day. There's just, there's been a lot. I mean, really since before Christmas, um, I, <clears throat> when we, we had the flu and then there was another, there was stomach virus that we went through and um, we had just different uh, family emergencies and just different things that, that happened and then the storm. And so it's like, come on, you know, we need a little break. But thank you for your grace when I can't get on here every day. And that doesn't mean that I'm not, um, you know, I don't care. It doesn't mean that I'm not faithful in what God has called me to do. It's just there's circumstances that happen a lot of times that I can't, you know. And trust me, you'll appreciate the fact that I did not get on when I was sneezing and coughing and um, yucky nose blowing, you know, going on. So um, but I am healed. We are on the mend and school went back in session today again after being out for the holidays and they went back last week for a few days and then this happened. So um, we are trying to get back to some kind of normal, what we would call normal. Okay, so um, I want to give a word that I already have released and I actually released it. I thought today was the 16th, but today's the 17th. Um, but I released it on January 16th of last year. And so I'm going to re-release that word. Um, when I read through it, I'm like, Lord, you know, and I had somebody ask me a question about, you know, the Lord says soon sometimes he says, you know, and th that was a year ago. And, you know, I have questioned that myself. I'm like, Lord, you said soon, but our soon and God's soon is not the same, obviously. Um, he is not bound by time. We are bound by time. And so we don't, it's hard for us to understand those, those things like that. But I, I do know that there has been a couple of times when I'm like, Lord, what is, why is, what the, what's the holdup? Why is it, you know, all of these other people also have been prophesying the same things that he's given me. Um, people that, that I had heard later, you know, after after he had given me words. And so he confirms that way across the board over and over and over again. He confirms his word um, to show his intentions and what he is going to do. But there have been times when I'm like, Lord, you know what you said soon. What what is happening? What is why does it feel like nothing is happening? And he always says something is happening. It's just happening behind the scenes. But. You know, on a separate front, you know, the very first week of January, things started coming out. I mean, like big things. And I know that he has said over and over again for us to prepare our hearts because of what we're going to see, what we're going to witness, things that we're going to learn that has been going on. And many people are not awake and they don't they aren't aware of the child trafficking that's gone on and the things that the sick and disgusting things that have gone on right under our noses that we didn't know about. It's going to cause great anger. Um, the Lord has already said that, that we have to prepare our hearts. But when I asked him, you know, what, why do, why is it taking so long? 
It's because God always sides with life. Always. First, first and foremost, he sides with life. If he can get people to come um, into his presence and repent, if he can get people to turn back, turn away from their wickedness, that's what he wants. I mean, it is not his will that any man uh, perish, but that every man comes to to know him. Um, and so in, in in that, he said, it's it's my great love and mercy for mankind. And so he has left the door of the ark, figuratively speaking, open for a lot longer because repentance for many has not come yet. And he ha he has begged and pleaded and given chance after chance. And, you know, eventually he will shut that door and it'll be too late. But right now is the time to repent. And so I'm going to say that right now. If you have anything, anything that's between you and the Father, if there's anything that you've done that you need to repent over, turn away from those things and repent. Trust that he forgives you Tr when you truly mean it. He sees your heart. He knows that that sometimes people just say words and they don't mean it from their heart. But he sees our hearts and he knows our intentions. He knows the the thoughts that we think and he knows the words that are going to come out of our mouth before we even open our mouths. And so if there's anything hindering you that you haven't been um, faithful in or that you have, it's been a sin constantly in your life that, you know, and it might be that you repent and then you go back to it and then you repent and then you go back to it. There comes a time when we have to say enough is enough. I'm tired of asking the Lord to forgive me for the same things over and over and over again. And, you know, we've all done that, I believe. I mean, I've done that when it came to forgiving people. He ha I had to constantly ask him to forgive me to help me with uh, when I would go through those things. And then I would go right back and I would let things in my heart, you know, come in and, and a little place in my heart would be hardened. And I had to get to the place where I, I said, Lord, I expose my whole heart to you. Search me, search me and see if there's anything um, that's not good in me, anything that's, that's wicked in your sight, remove it. And so that this is a time of repentance. He is calling every single person to repentance, no matter what their political affiliation, no matter what religion they are, no matter what color their skin is, no matter where they're from, what country they live in, it does not matter your family status. It does not matter. He is calling us to repent. And, you know, there's so many scriptures that talk about repentance. And I think that we make it more difficult than it truly is when we would just turn away um, I mean, repentance means to turn to turn away from and in order to let go of those things, you have to turn your back on them. Is it going to be hard? Yes, especially when you have um, had sin in your life for so long um, and, and you've gone back to the same thing over and over again and you think, well, he's not going to forgive me this time. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. It doesn't matter. It's just like forgiveness. You know, he, he has said 70 times seven. That's how many times you forgive someone who wrongs you, who hurts you, who offends you. 70 times seven. And that doesn't mean um, in their in the lifetime. I believe that means every day. And so basically it's a um, open ended uh, forgiveness, you know, that we have to give people. And so his mercy is new every morning. And when you have, when you come to him with the thing that you deal with and you lay it down at his feet, give it to him, let him take it from you. Tell him that you're not strong enough in your mind and in your heart and in your emotions to deal with it, but that you're handing it over to him, no matter what it is. And he will take it from you. And it might be a minute by minute thing for you to, uh, to live and stay away from the sin that you've dealt with. But he will help you and he will lead you and guide you into all truth. And so just give it to him. Repent if you have anything between you and him, because there's nothing that can separate his love for us. Nothing. No matter what we do, he still loves us. Um, sin does separate us, though, in the fact that he hides his his face when when sin is um, is rampant, you know, but he loves us. He doesn't ever stop loving us. And so this, the only thing that separates us is sin. And we, that is our decision to do that when we, when we do that. And so trust him because he's good and he's faithful.
Okay. I'm sorry it took so long to to say that, but it was important. We needed to um to I needed to just lay that out. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for your mercy. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for your grace. Our unmerited favor that you have given us over and over and over again. When when there have been times that we should be sitting in jail, there are times that we should have had to answer for laws that we broke or things that we did. Your grace covered us. Your grace is sufficient, Lord. And so I thank you, Father, that you just, as you call to repentance, that every person within the sound of my voice would repent, Lord. They would leave it at your feet and give it over to you for you to handle because you're a good God. You're a big God. There's nothing that shocks you. There's nothing that surprises you. And so, Lord, I thank you that as we do that and we lay that down, that you renew our spirit, you renew our strength, you renew us, Lord, you renew our mind and the way that we think and know that we know that we know that you have everything under control because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so, Lord, I thank you that you put a hedge of protection around this channel, around this word, Lord. I thank you that it will not fall to, to the ground. Uh, it will not return to you void. It will fulfill the thing that you set it out to do in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Okay. I know that was a long opening, but you know, there, that was uh, very important. And now I have to go in here and find the word because I didn't prepare. I had saved it uh, on my phone, but I didn't save it, I'll open it on my laptop. So I have to open it really quick. I'm sorry. I hope you guys have, um, have been well. I hope that uh, sickness and illness is far from you. If you have any prayer requests or praise reports, put them in the comments. Um, please put them in the comments and share them. You don't have to give names if you're not comfortable doing that, but God sees it all and he knows it all. And we will put our agreement to yours. And you know, the word says, or two or three agree together, touching anything within when it's his will then he'll do it. He, it will be done for you. And so we can go to him with anything and where two or three are gathered together in his name. He's there in the midst of us. He's always there with us, helping us and uh, pulling us out of the miry clay when we get our feet sometimes uh, in places that shouldn't be there when we get stuck. Okay. Let me see. I have to search this real quick. Um, Let's see, January 16th. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but it when I read this word, it was such a, it could have, it's one of these that could have been written this morning. I love, love, love when he does that because he is so faithful and so sweet, but yet he is so strong. He's exactly what we need. Okay. Um, I originally heard this word on April the 26th of 2022 at 6 42 AM. And I released it on January the 16th of 2023. I have shared before that, uh, some of these words, he just, he had me hold on to, he, you know, some of them, I, I, he said, sit on it for a while. And, and then when he, when I would ask him, he would say, okay, release this. And it always is the perfect timing when, uh, when he, does that he's and he's faithful in it so he said i the lord tell you this my children my love is like a soft landing place no matter where you come from no matter the mistakes you've made no matter how far away it seems that you have fallen my love is a soft landing spot do you not understand that i forgive you for all when you ask me to I hold no record of wrongs when repentance is involved, not me. I do not hold your sins against you. That is what man does. I am not a man. No matter the state of your heart, when you fall, I will catch you. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. When I forgive, it's gone, my children. It's gone forever. I cast it into the sea of forgetfulness to be remembered no more. The only one who tries to remember, sorry, who tries to remind you is the devil himself. He is the accuser of the brethren, my children. His nature is in his title, 
the accuser. Every sin that you commit and repent for, every one, when you turn away from that sin, I put it under the blood of Jesus. There is great power in the blood. It covers and washes. It heals and restores. It covers the multitude of sins and shame. He was slain for you, my children. He was as a sacrifice for you. If I would give my son as that loving, living sacrifice for you and all mankind, why wouldn't I forgive you now? Why would I do all of that just to hold it against you? I wouldn't. I forgive it all when you ask. That's the key. We have to go to him in repentance. Although there is a law that I must uphold, that is the law of sowing and reaping. For all that is sown, there must be a harvest to reap. I cannot go against my own law. Whatever a man sows, that must he reap. If he sows seeds of love, you will reap a harvest of love back to you. If you sow wickedness, you will reap that harvest. If you sow discord and betrayal, you will yield a harvest of such. Every deed, every action, every work is of sowing and reaping. Even though you repent and are forgiven, a harvest must be reaped from it. But my children, no matter how far away you go from my side, I still see you and I still watch you where you go. No matter how far away from me you go, my love is a soft landing place. No matter how far you you fall, I will always catch you and my love for you. There is nothing that can separate you from my love. No height or depth, no life, no death, angels or principalities or powers, nothing, no things present or things to come. No other created being can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, no matter how far it seems you are gone. You have gone. I am only a whisper away, my children. On a side note, after I, um, after he gave me this word, the, the fir- that first uh, in April when it, when, he, when I first heard it, he um, I wrote a song called "Only a Whisper Away." He gave me, and I'm not a songwriter, but he gave me all the words to remind that he is only a whisper away. My great love for you is like a great fireman's pillow. They use to rescue those who jump or fall from high heights. You are never too far away from me, my children, for you were bought with a price. You are precious in my sight. My love will always try to call to you. It will always bid you to come home in the arms of your father. When you stray, Know that I am here waiting for your return. I am married to the backslider. I will always try to get you to come home. For even though you live in this world and must be a part of the society in this world, you are not of this world, my children. You are my pearls of great price. I gave you hope when I gave you Jesus. I gave you a future. I gave you an eternity with me. It is for whosoever wants it. I gave my covenant love. You are a blessed people because of my love for you. No one can separate us or tear us apart from each other, my children. You have all you need from me. Come up higher. Come and meet me. Sit a while and talk to me. I never grow bored or weary of hearing you talk to me. I long to tell you the secrets of the deep. I long to lavish you with my love and give you what you are lacking as a human. 
Man cannot give to you the way that I do, my children. Man gives to you in man's way. It is never unconditional. Although some may try to, he can't because he still has within him human comp components. I give freely. I love freely with an unconditional love that no man can give. My grace covers you and my mercy outlasts anything you could ever do. I look upon the heart. I see the heart and I give mercy. This is why I am moving for you, my children, in this hour. In this hour of uncertainty, I am moving for you. I see the state of man's evil hearts and I must move toward them. I move toward them, but they reject my coming. They despise my ways. They feast continually on the corruption they have created. The corruption they invited, sorry, the corruption they invented for you, my children. I have warned and then warned again. They have deliberately ignored me and set themselves up on high to try to rule over you with iron and cruel fists. They will not succeed, children of Almighty God. Your evil and corrupt leaders and your evil and corrupt elites, as they call themselves, will soon see their ending. They have made their decisions against me. They have risen up in their own eyes of greatness. They are merely ants in my sight that will soon be squashed under my feet of justice. They believe they have gotten away with much because they think I have, haven't have done anything against them. This is the furthest thing from the truth. They have gotten away with absolutely nothing. They will answer to me for each and every evil deed done in my sight against you, my children. There are things about to be uncovered and exposed that will be sickening and disturbing in your sight. Bring it to me and I will help you. The truth must be shown and revealed to all in order for many to believe. Because you have chosen to believe me at my very word, great blessings will come upon you, my faithful children. I am not silent but many refuse to wake up and hear me. I am about to come in as a roaring lion to many of this evil puffed up people. I am breaking their lies wide open. I am moving against all who are with them. Many will be gone from your sight and they will harm you no more. I will strip them. I will strip from them all they hold dear and leave them bleeding like they did you. The others will be stripped of all wealth and will stand with nothing but their name, and then I will take that from them too. Many will lose their lives. They were warned and ignored by many pleas. Now their lives, they thought were private, will all be out in the open for all to see. Their sanity will only be held on by a thread. They will lose their bowels as they mumble things and won't, that won't be understood. They put their hands against my people, and now I will put my hands against them. There is nowhere for them to run that I won't be there. There is nowhere to hide that I won't hunt them down like they hunted you. It is coming, my children. It is coming and nothing can stop the landslide of truth that will destroy them. It will be difficult to witness my children. It will be hard to hear. But look to me. I will help you and protect you. Look to me and I will deliver you from the sights and sounds you are about to witness. Stay close to me. Hold on to me. I am your rescuer. I will not lead you astray or cast you away from my side. No, 
I will hold you in my great arms of comfort, and I will show you my true intentions for man. My love is greater than any anything that could ever come against you, children of Almighty God. No, nothing can separate me from you. You are the apple of my eye. My eyes are always toward you. I cause the sun to shine upon you and bless you with blessings beyond compare. Keep standing, says the Lord your God. Keep standing and keep watch. It is almost time for my retribution to begin. Hold on tight to me. We are headed for rough waters and high seas. But my children, you are in my realm of protection. Nothing can harm you and come against you. You are in my palms of safety. Hold my hand and don't let go. Let your trust in me cover all your fears and doubts. I will help you. Believe me at my word, says the Lord. Believe me and you will prosper in the midst of destruction. You will be blessed in the midst of chaos. I have you separated with me. I am on your side and my side always wins. Anthony Fauci, your unraveling has begun. I will strip you of all things you hold dear. Your treasonous acts and your abominations are before me. Your rapid decline is here. You are finished. Your life as you know it will be wiped away from you. To the stolen White House, you will all pay high prices for what you have done and for what you have taken part in. You will all suffer dire consequences as I strip you all naked in front of the world. Many of you will die a hard death with treason written on you for all eternity. All of you will answer to the vile and filthy entertainment industry, to the sports world and to Hollywood and to the vile music makers. All of you who have touched my children will pay for your crimes to all who took part in satanic rituals to get you where you are to all of you who made deals with the devil and had many follow you into the deceptive trap, you will answer for your crimes against me and against the innocent. Judgment is raining down on all of you in this hour. I will not be mocked. I will not be mocked at my words and my standing. You will all pay large prices for your evil deeds and vile lives. Reaping your harvest, you sowed, will be first. All that you did to people will be done to you. All that you traded will will be traded with you in mind. You have gone against the wrong one. You have stood up against me and dug in your heels in where you stood. I will take all your wealth and I will give it to my people. Many of you will lose your lives soon. Many of you will have nothing to hold on to as I strip you bare for all to see. Your wrath is, a, sorry, my wrath is upon you now. Repent before it's too late. To all who shook hands in secret meetings and made secret deals to hurt my innocent people, you will answer for your part in this atrocity. To the media, the corrupt and lying media, you and all your social platforms will be weighed and measured. Many of you are finished. Your time is up soon. Those of you who took part in the stealing of this nation will pay a high and just price. Many of you will be removed never to work in this industry ever again. Many will be stripped of all you have and tossed out. Many of you will die a sad death. Again, I will not be mocked. My judging hand is on you all, and all is about to be exposed and told. My children, I did not want this. I did not want it to come to this. I am a loving and fair God. My banner is always hope and love, and my love of life is always first. 
I have given these evil people more than enough time to repent and turn away from what they are doing, more time than they deserved. Their time is up and their lives are lost. What is coming will help you and bless you, my children. Praise me not for the loss of life, but for the new life I am giving you. Praise me for what I am about to do will be greater than anyone could ever have imagined. Ford will be in your news with a major recall. Watch as I reveal things about this company. Um, this wasn't too long after um, he had given me this word that Ford came out and recalled uh, 39,000 SUVs um, after engine or fire, uh, fire reports. Watch as hurricane force winds blow through the United States. There will be no hurricane as it blows, but the force will be great. Um, I believe this has been going on too. And I know last year we had um, just in our town, it just rose up and it was straight line winds that knocked, I mean, trees on houses, flooded houses. It was, it was crazy because there, it wasn't even raining. It was just wind. Shinzo will be in your news. Listen to what is said. And this was fulfilled on July 8th of 2022. He had given me the word in April of 2022, where the uh, ex-Japanese uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was assassinated uh, at age 69 after a campaign uh, when he was he was out out and about camp doing a campaign. He was um, he was assassinated. The words "blunt force trauma" will be in your local news. Watch what the cause is. Reaping is already happening. Lights, camera, action will be in your headlines. My children, my show has begun and it is about to get good, as you would say. Um, it's funny when he says things like that because I'm like, really, Lord, lights, camera, action. But there are uh, there are always interesting things that come when he says these when we, he says to look for these things in in high in in uh, headlines. Then we have to you know to look and I love how he said my show has begun and it is about to get good as you would say. Easter Island will be in your news soon. Look at the reasons why and what is being said. I believe this was fulfilled in October of uh, the same year when there was a fire on Easter Island and there were the, um, the, the towering, um, Mo, I don't know how to say it, the Moai uh, statues. There was a suspected arson that, that happened and there were several of them that were charred. I mean, just ruined. And so those, that was in, in the news. And I believe this one was in the news too. Wastewater will be part of a statement made in your news. Pay attention and listen closely to what they are saying. They can't fool me, children. I see it all and I know it all. And I believe this was fulfilled in August of the same year um, because polio was found in New York wastewater um, before there was a first conform, a confirmed case. And so it, there, there's always things that happen that set it in motion and show us what's, what's happening. And so that, you know, the Lord said, pay attention and look closely. It's what's been saying, uh, what's being said. Durham is about to come out swinging. The harder he digs, the further the trails of blood go. He will find a treasure trove of evidence against many. Nicholas Cage, this one surprised me. Nicholas Cage, you have been found on the wrong side of decisions. Repent, Nicholas. Repent and I will forgive you. My children, look for all these signs I am giving you. I am showing you the truth out in the open. I am giving you these things to show you that I am moving for you and that I can be trusted. Trust me. Believe me. I have never forsaken you, my precious ones, and I never will. And that was the end of that word. That was a long word. Um, and there was a lot of stuff in that. 
you know, he is faithful to, to do what he, he will do for us. But, you know, he reminded us that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He is the accuser. To accuse means to charge with a fault, offense, or crime, or to declare to have committed a crime, to find fault with, and to blame. He accuses us. Even when we go to the Lord and we ask for we in repentance and we ask him to forgive us, he still accuses us. He still remembers, but the Lord doesn't remember it anymore. And I love this scripture, Revelation 12 and 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our believing brothers, other, other translations say the accuser of the brethren, has been thrown down at last. He will accuse them. He who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. I love that scripture because we are made overcomers. We are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. The blood of the lamb is the blood of Jesus. He's already died. He's already resurrected. The blood that was spilled did a multitude of things, but we are made overcomers because of that. But not only that, by the word of our testimony, when God does something good for you, we need to testify about it. We need to share with what God's done for us. There's been so many times when people go through things that I went through and it was a hard trial for me. And when you, when you go through something, you're able to look at somebody and say, I know exactly where you've been, but let me tell you what God did for me. Let me tell you how I got out of that situation. Let me tell you how I went through the fire. And sometimes we don't come out unscathed, but sometimes we do. But God is with us. He is another one in the fire. He's the one that's with us. I love the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, when the king threw the three Hebrew boys in the burning, uh, it was burning seven times hotter than, than it normally was. When he threw them into the fire, he saw a fourth one. He saw them walking around without their... Uh, they were bound when they were thrown in, but they were walking around free. And there was a fourth man with them who was the son of God. And so he is in the fire with us. He helps us. So when Satan comes to you, accusing you, reminding you of what you, you know, what you did, reminding you and telling you and getting you to, to question and doubt God, you just tell him to shut up and go back to hell where he belongs because that's where he is going to be. And so, you know, he has no power and authority over you unless you give it to him. And so he can't, he can, he can try to accuse. He can try to talk you out of your blessing. He can try to get you to doubt and, and be in fear. He can try, but only the power that you give him is how far he can go. And so when he accuses you, you just remind him of who you are. You are a child of the Most High God. You are highly favored. You are the head and not the tail. You are blessed going in and coming out in the city and out of the city. You are highly favored and blessed. And God has nothing but good for us. Sometimes we have to go through things to get to the next place. You know, the other day in prayer, the Lord, um, and I don't know if I shared this. I can't remember if I shared this on the my last video or not, but. Um, I'll tell you anyway, if I have, if I have, I'll, you'll hear it a second time, but we were in prayer and the Lord, um, it was so strong. And he said, he said the the season that you've been in is about to change. Things are about to change. And many of you have been in the wilderness and those who have been in the wilderness that that season is up, but you had to be separated for a short time in order to go to the next place in the next season. And, and I mean, I just remember I was weeping because I was like, Lord, we, it, it feels like, um, it feels like it's been so long. You know what? I'm going to read it because it's not a very long word, but I, I saved it in my phone 
because it was so um, important. He said, it all changes soon. The season of dryness and wilderness is coming to a close for many. Many have asked, will this season ever end? It was much to bear, yes, but I never placed more on you than you could handle. Through strides of pain and difficulty did growth happen. It was necessary growth. You could not go to the place called next until you completed the growth that was needed. And, and I just remember I was weeping and, and right at that moment, we were at church. We, we, we have a, a Monday night a prayer meeting and I was sitting in the back on the floor actually. Um, and we were just praying and, and he gave me that word. I wrote it down. And then after he said that last word, all of a sudden I smelled this smell that, um, that I, it was familiar, but it smelled almost like, um, I don't know if it's a antiseptic type smell, you know, like what you smell in hospitals, but I would, but I, it was so strong. And I was like, Lord, what, 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 what is that? And he, and he showed me an, an all an aloe, um, leaf, you know, an aloe vera plant in, in it. And he broke it in half. And when he, when it broke, the smell just, and it's not a very good smell, but what does, what is aloe for? It is for um, injury. You know, it is for pain. It is for, it heals. When you have a sunburn, when you have um, any kind of wounds, it, it, it is, it is for that. And so he was showing me that that season that we've been in and, you know, on a side note, I was like, Lord, wow aloe you're covering us you're healing us you're helping us but when i looked it up it was interesting because aloe vera plants grow in very dry places like africa where it grows naturally um but in the dryness and so there was a point to all of that and so hang on because if you're see if you're going into a new season put that season behind you but Take what you've learned from it. Take the growth that came from it and be willing to go to the next place that he calls you because he's got you. He orders your steps when you let him. He, he, all of our steps are ordered. It's just imagine, a, a matter of uh, we decide to follow him or not, you know, but they're ordered. They're ready to they're ready to follow if we'll just follow. So be blessed. Keep standing in faith. Keep pursuing keep pushing through don't give up don't turn around it's not time to take a break we have to stand in the places that he's called us and we have to stand in repentance with a clean heart there can't be anything that he's holding on to that we're holding on to to keep him from from helping us when you do and you let go of these things there it's such peace and there's just you know sometimes you do things that in the natural there's a consequence for but when you repent, you don't have that weighing on you anymore, if that makes sense. You might still have to walk out the natural consequence. Um, like if you rob the bank, you know, and you get caught, you're going to have to go to jail. But when you, when you, when it's something like that and you repent and you make things right and God forgives you, God can help you do anything that you go through. He can be, he'll, he's with you no matter what. So be encouraged. Sorry, I went a little longer um, today, but be blessed. I'm going to do my best to get on here tomorrow. It is always my intention to do it. It's just when things happen, I can't. It's just, a, it's just a thing, you know, I have to, I have to have internet to do this. And, and so um, no matter what happens, I pray for you. We pray for you. We cover you uh, again, put your prayer request and praise reports in the comments. We pray uh, and Friday morning, we have a corporate prayer at church. So I will um, carry those needs to the church too. So, all right. Have a great afternoon. I will see you next time.